So that's okay. So, so let's start with that one. All right. We're officially started now, so I'm, I'm going to introduce the program to you. Uh, welcome, Chaka Jones, to the African Diaspora Program. Uh, this is where uh, we try to get um, life stories and experience of um, uh, um, successful men and women of African descent that have built a career or business in the UK, then use those life stories and experience to mentor, motivate, and inspire the next generation of African youth in the UK. So welcome to the program. I'm going to start by you introducing yourself, what you do, uh, when you move to the UK, or if you were born in the UK, your background, and how you went about achieving your goals and dreams. OK, so I'm Shaka Jones. I'm currently the senior lecturer here at BCU. I teach on the digital marketing degree. Um, I was born here, and my parents were born um, respectively in their countries. So my mum was born from in Guyana, my dad was from Trinidad, and they both moved here. So I was probably the, the first um, generation here from my parents to be born in the UK. Um, what's the next question, Kingsley? <laughs> um, well, okay, like growing up in the UK, what was it like? I mean, of someone from of African descent, what was it like growing up in this in the system, trying to um, your goals, being a lecturer, did it start from when you were young or the dreams came along um, maybe in college or in the university? Um, um, okay, so I would say the lecturing... Or was it like treading the system? So, okay. so I, had, I, didn't think I, would, I didn't think I would be a lecturer for one. So that's, um, um, I would, this is kind of like my third um, career change. So this is where I am now. Um, I always wanted to work, uh, so I guess I always liked creativity and technology. Um, hence, I worked in, went into digital marketing um, after I finished my degree. Um, however, I knew that you always had to work hard and always every day you have to, you know, put your best foot forward um, to get what you want. And that, I guess that's come from my parents, you know, coming over, um, you know, to the UK. Um, and within my family as well, um, that was always the case. Um, in terms of where I grew up in the UK, in, well, I grew up in London, so it was quite multicultural. Um, and in terms of the schools and the education, well, the, the people that were around, it was quite mixed. So um, in terms of my being who I am within that at that age, um, it didn't seem to make much of a difference. <laughs> we were just all in it together. Um, and then obviously I went up to university um, and then started to enter the working world. And that's when I guess, you know, you'd notice differences in terms of, you know, the sort of the effort, the people that you're working with, um, you know, not everyone looks like you. Um, you could be maybe the only female as well um, in the room because of the working in digital marketing and going into that sort of industry. And um, so I would say that's where, you know, you kind of notice the differences um, of how you have to sort of motivate yourself to get to the next stage. So on um, this ladder to becoming a senior lecturer in BCU, what was the challenges you encountered? What was the ups and downs? On, I mean, being someone of African descent and also being a female, I mean, you must have encountered some challenges. How did you, um, how did you face those challenges? Um, so yeah, I think age as well, um, and also perceived as uh, being quite young. Um, in in academia, everyone is probably a lot more older, more, more learned than you, and they've been in it for a very long time. Um, and I guess um, imposter syndrome is one of the things that you definitely encounter um, because um, you switched from working in industry to actually working in academia, and it has different roles and responsibilities. Um, and you have to approach it in a different way. There's lots to learn as well. Um, and so when you're in certain meetings or, you know, having to do certain things, um, you're not always sure that you're doing it in the right way or if you're actually delivering on what's supposed to be expected of you as well, um, at all levels um, within that role. So, go on. So was it determination, was it persistence, or was it principles or values? What was 
what was the thing that pushed you to achieve these goals? Was it like uh, straight up, it was focused or determination? What was it you had in mind? Um, you know? um, so for me, I'm a strong believer that you get out what you put in. So I'm always, you know, and I've always from a young age known that, you know, if you do something and put the effort into it, something's going to happen at, on the other side. Um, and so whenever you approach anything or anything that you want out in life and that sort of thing, it's the effort you put in, you'll get something out of it. And the continue, and when you start seeing the results, actually, you know, that motivates you to try further and to come out of your comfort zone and to try new things and to realise, yes, I do have a position and place within, you know, the context that I am. It takes a, a while to get there, to realise um, um, all the experience, um, your strengths that you have and what you can bring to the table, essentially, um, or creating your own table. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so I think continued effort will get you there. Um, as well as, you know, li not limiting yourself by barriers, you know, not, not letting things stop you and not having any regrets. You should always try you know, and try your best with what you have at the time. Okay. Okay. So what are, what do you think are the chances of people, I mean, like students moving to the UK to study, especially those coming from Africa or maybe um, Jamaica or any other uh, place of African descent coming to the UK for studies, what are the chances of achieving their dreams and goals here in the UK? Um, I think for um, just any international student as well, but I know we're particularly focusing on the African diaspora, it's the difference in culture as well and the relationship and the way that we teach here, I suppose, um, the system in which um, things are communicated and delivered. Um, I think you have to switch gear and understand um, how it's thought, but also you should not feel um, like an imposter visa because if you've got a place at university um, and they've accepted you you're there for a reason and you know you've got everything ahead of you to pay for um, so yeah I think that but sometimes it is difficult to communicate because you're you're seeing different people it's not necessarily people that you would normally communicate with especially lecturers and academics are seen as something you know a bit different um, in, in from your respective countries but held in a different regard so I think you have to come there and be honest. And if you're struggling, you have to say, and you're you're there for a reason, and you've got the place, and you're you know the fact that you're there is the first step forward. And so you shouldn't so, allow certain things to get in your way. So in a nutshell, you're trying to say that with the right motivation, with the right focus, determination, anybody that comes here gets an admission in the school is there for a reason. And for that reason, he or she can achieve whatever he sets his mind on, I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Ooh. And also, I think you get in where you fit in. You know, there's no point trying to force yourself to be somewhere where it doesn't feel right. You know, you know it doesn't feel right and, you know, it's not working for you. So you have to, you know, it takes trial and error, but that's what life is about, I suppose. All right. The, the most important thing is that, I mean, uh, you are a testimony to the fact that a lady or someone from African descent can be wherever she wants to be in the UK. I mean, with the right determination, is a testimony. So, I mean, the audience out there, these these students we are trying to get this um, interview to, I mean, they should see this and think, oh yeah, it's it's achievable, it's possible, I can do this. Uh, that's the aim of this. So, I'd like to ask you, what's the advice to these people like? What's your advice? And then your experience as a lecturer, what are the things you think that might uh, impede on students from achieving their goals? Um, I think um, for students, I suppose, um, it's, yeah, it, it really, it's about the effort, it's the hard work. Nothing comes just like that. So what you see, you know, we all have the perceptions of social media and what happens and so on. No, everyone's not there because they put the effort in. From the top man to, you know, wherever, you're there because of the effort that you put in. So as long as you come with that energy and that focus, like, I'm going to try my best with what I have all the time, you're going to see the rewards. Um, in terms of, what was the second question about? Like, um, I mean, from your experience, I mean, a lot of people come in here and then from my surround themselves with the people with the wrong friends 
not bad. It turns around and you know impedes them from achieving their goals. Most of them drop out of school. So, what's your advice to these students? What and what what are the things they should do and things they should not do from your own experience? Um, I think you have to put yourself first as well. What you always remember why you've come here and what you've come to do. Um, and try not to get waylaid by, you know, other influences and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, when you finish your degree and you've graduated, you may not see these people again. They're going to go off into their respective places and, you know, whatever. And you may not have done your best at the time, you know. Um, and the process will make you better, you know, going through the process will make you better at the end. Um, but what I would say is actually don't be afraid to communicate with your lecturers. You know, they're there for a reason. They're there to help. They don't feel you know, oh, I'm scared or anything, you know, we're actually here to facilitate your growth and learning. That's our purpose. That's in our job role. So if you can't, you know, communicate or, you know, understand, you know, what the brief is or, you know, what does this mean when I'm supposed to do? How are you supposed to succeed? So you have to set yourself up in the best way possible. And that's through maybe stepping out of your comfort zone, talking to lecturers, finding out what's going on, you know, maybe collaborating with your colleague, colleagues and stuff like that. Um, so you can get the find your best path to get the best results from what you're going, what you wanted to do. <laughs> All right. So the most important thing here is communication. Yeah, I get that. Anyway, uh, I thank you very much for jumping on this program and trying to, you know, reach out to the students out there. Thank you very much for jumping. On. But the last question here is, um, what do you think of this program? Uh, how do you think? I mean, one of the reasons I started this program is that I think a lot of people move, international students, especially from Africa, they move over here and they have goals, they have dreams, they have ambitions. Uh, they move over here and then it all vanishes. Most of them think uh, it's hard to achieve those dreams. Most of them think the system is going to work against them. And then they end up doing odd jobs all their life. And a lot of them move back to their home country. And uh, but Looking on the other side, you find out that there are a lot of people that have come here and achieved those dreams. I mean, you're a testimony, female of African descent. You've achieved your goals, achieved your dreams, and you're a testimony to them. So that's why I'm trying to reach out to people like you to speak up about your life, experience, your life experience. So it in turn motivates these people. So what do you think about this pro program? What do you think about the African diaspora? I think it's um, the program's good. I think it's a good way for people to understand, you know, what it's like here. I think if you get honest, you know, um, views as to, you know, wait, basically when you come here, this is the sort of things that you're going to expect. It's going to be hard. Yes, it's cold. It's all of the above, and you're going to feel a type of way. However, with continued effort and so on, you know, and engaging with resources such as what you're providing, um, will help you get there. You know, because you're not alone, and that's the thing is also to remember, like there's other people that are in the same boat as you trying to make their way as well. So um, I think it's a nice way to bring attention to that issue that, that people do face when coming over. OK, 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 before we we'll close up, um, I'm going to post this interview on our social media handles. And some students might reach out on the comment section to ask one or two questions. Or will you be open to answer these questions, the important questions, if they reach out? Um, yes, I'll definitely try my best to answer them <laughs> in a timely manner. All right. All right, all right, all right. Thank you very much, Chaka Jones, for being part of this program. Uh, thank you, and um, I hope your story inspires people, and I know it will. So thank you very much. Oh, thanks, Kinsey. Nice to speak to you too. All the best. All right, all right. Let me just uh, stop recording.